from the pulpit of many colors of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, the evangelistic arm of Voice of the Last Days Ministry, we bring you the message of the hour, the very mind of God for the now. It is revelational message that guarantees soundness of mind and body and prepares the soul for eternity with God Almighty. May I now invite you to pay great attention as this man of God, Pastor A.C. Ahanibo, the senior pastor of Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, brings you the message of the hour from the pulpit. Thank you very much for tuning in to the message of the hour from the pulpit of many colors of the Watchman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, and I pray that God bless you abundantly for tuning in. The message of the hour for this time is titled, and he died. And he died. The message in hand as titled is the talk in this series of very insightful and uh, timely pieces of information from the mind of God. If we exclude the first one, which was introductory. Like I said, this is the talk. The introductory session shows us the definition of the message of the hour, as well as the definition of the pulpit of many colors. And as a matter of a reminder, I want to go back to define the message of the hour. That is why it is titled the message of the hour. It is so titled because it reveals the very mind of God on any issue, on the issues at hand, the issues of the moment. God uses uh, such messages to address the hearts of men on the issues of the moment. I've already told you the title of the message that we have in hand. And the purpose of this message, and he died, is to address the huge ignorance and the attendant indifference of the peoples of this world with regard to death and dying. The people, the modules of this world, even though none of them is an unbeliever in the matter of death and dying, that is one aspect of life that nobody is an unbeliever, nobody is an infidel. The governor is not an infidel in the matter. The president of nations is not. The pauper is not. Every reasonable person is a believer in the matter of death or dying. Yet, more of people mill around and they don't care any hoot. They don't care hoot about death or dying. And it is because of this sorry situation that this message is coming your way. But adventure some soul will be awakened to the stark realities ahead of us and the necessity somebody should undertake because of what goes or what comes beyond that. I'm going to go to uh, the history of uh, the news of and he died and she died. We have uh, all over the period from generations gone past, 
news of and he died or and she died and I want to go back to the very beginnings and uh, show how they lived and died and from there I'll come to the present or to the recent past as far as our memories can go and then in the present how they lived and die and then but after that what then happens in Genesis chapter 5 I want to show the generations of Adam they lived and died although they lived very long yet they died Genesis chapter 5 this is the book of the generations of Adam that is verse 1 in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died, despite nearing 1,000 years, he eventually died. Verse 6, And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 800 and seven years, and began sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. Another somebody living near 1,000 years, and he died. But he died later on, at the end of the day. Verse 9, And Enos lived 90 years, and began Canaan. And Enos lived after he began Canaan 800 and fifteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years, and he died. Now let us look at, uh, go forward, fast forward the record, and then we read from verse 18. And Jared lived an hundred and sixty and two years, and begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. Another person clocking near 1,000 years. Let's look at the lifespan of uh, Enoch who also died. Verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah, 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five, 365 years, a reduction. But this person walked with God, and God took him. He did not die the natural death. He just was translated into heaven, a kind, a type of the rapture that the church is going to go through shortly. Now, um, many people know about this one in verse 25. And Methuselah lived 180 and uh, seven years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he began Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and nine years and he died. They call him the person that lived longest and yet he died. And uh, if we go forward, we will see the record of the generations of uh, uh, between Shem and Abram. And some lived 600 plus years, some lived 900 plus years, some lived 400 plus years. If you go to read from uh, 
Genesis chapter 11, and from verse 10, you have all that record. On and on. In the course of time, because of a sin, now something happened, and uh, the Lord reduced uh, the lifespan of mankind. And uh, this is what we have in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and from verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. That was uh, what happened in the generation of uh, Noah uh, because of the sin. But even after that, some people still lived very long. Uh, much, much later on, there is this record that we have in Psalm 90, still reducing the lifespan of man. In Psalm 90, and uh, we are reading uh, from verse uh, 1, Lord, thou hast borne our dwelling place in all generations. Verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast uh, formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. Now, verse 8, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years in, as a tear that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten, seventy. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength level and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. If by any reason, Somebody makes it to 80, 90, 100, 120. Well, that person will eventually cave in and die. And they died. And he died. And she died. Now listen to this. The good, the bad, the wicked, the righteous, the wise, the unwise. The small and the great, the ruler and the subject, the person that doesn't believe in God, the atheist, the person that believes, the person that is uh, in totality of uh, unbelief, free thinker, every person, big, small, old, young, educated, illiterate. They all die. One cause comes unto them. One incident is appointed to them. And he died. And she died. We see that in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And we are reading verse 14. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness, and I myself perceive also that one event happened to them all. One event happened to them all. And what is that event? What is that event that happened to them all in Psalm 49? Psalm 49, and we are reading from verse 10. Psalm 49. And um, verse 10, for he said that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Wise men die, the foolish man dies, the young person dies, the old person dies, uh, the elegant person dies, the arrogant dies, the brutal dies, the wicked person dies, the good person dies, and they died. Until today, they die. Today, people are dying. Tomorrow, people will die. The day after, people will die. And they die. 
the good, the bad, the nasty, the brutish. Now, we know this because uh, we have the record of uh, people that were good, people that followed the Lord, people that uh, were children of God, and we also know that there were people that were children of Satan, and then they all died. Abraham died. He was 175 years when he died. Abraham was that man that God singled out and said, because of what I see in you, I'm going to use you to raise a nation, a nation that is called the Israelites, even the Jews, the nation that you see today. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will through you bless the whole world through your seed, and that was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ as far as the flesh is concerned. Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. The man who walked with God, the man who was a friend of God, the man who was a prophet of God, of whom it was stated, touch not my anointed, and do my prophet no harm. He died. And we know of... Uh, Moses, the man of God, whom God used, the man that was passionate about his people, the man that had the opportunity even to remain in the land of Egypt and then enjoy the goodies of the palace. But he would not do that. He just teach on the, all sorts of things and the clever unto his people. And the, the Lord saw that quality in him and used him as a great instrument, a man of God, who was God's mouthpiece, of whom God said, you are a God unto Pharaoh, a God unto Israel, and a God unto the rest of the people. You are my representative. You have my power of attorney. You have senior brother is your prophet, the person that you speak to, and he will speak to the people. And Moses died. Listen to me, you are there, and um, you are um, a good person, you know the Lord, and um, you are a friend of God, you are a servant of God, you became a servant of God a number of years ago, and then I want to inform you that uh, you will, at the end of the day, die. But... Uh, it's not the death that is the issue, but it is a thing that happens after death. We are simply showing that everybody is bound to die. Unfortunately, there are those that know it. They know it very well. They do not need a university education. They do not need education from anybody. They do not need any information. They are believers in this stark reality. Yet... They go about and don't care as if there is nothing ahead. They don't care anything about anything. But those people will eventually die. Now, Joseph died. Joseph, the special person. The one that was different from his brethren. Now you are there, a Christian, and you are different from other Christians because of your character. That's fantastic. You are going to die. And then, but in the course of time, we now find out what happens after that. Now Samuel, the great prophet and kingmaker, the great prophet and kingmaker, whose birth was miraculous, the son of that lady that prayed and said, God, give me a man child, and I will return that man child unto your service, unto you. And the Lord just did like that. And Samuel became a special person, but Samuel died. The wise man, Solomon. Solomon, the wisest of all the kings, Solomon also died. Can I tell you something about Solomon? So that you will know the person we are talking about, Solomon, is that individual, that king, that God gave 
fantastic wisdom, incredible wisdom, according to the request of his heart. In 1 Kings chapter 3, I am reading from verse 1. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh king of Egypt and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Now, verse 3, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only his sacrifice and burnt incense in high places. And the king Solomon went to Gibeon to sacrifice there for that word, the great high place, a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy great people, thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people. I cannot be numbered nor counted for more. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart, who judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people and this peace? Please thrill the Lord. As Solomon has asked this thing. And the Lord said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself. Nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding and to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall arise any unto thee. That was Solomon the wisest of kings, and he has this testimony of himself as we read from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 12. I, the preacher, was king of Israel in Jerusalem, and I gave my heart to seek and serve out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. They saw travel had God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. Verse 16, I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and I've gotten more wisdom than all they that have born before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. Verse 17, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. Listen to me. This man had wisdom and then did great things, had all shots, had 3,000 proverbs to his uh, account, but he died. Now, I want to inform you that uh, you are there, you have great wisdom, you are a philosopher, you are a great thinker, you are a scientist. In fact, you have accolades. You are somebody that has a lot of accolades, a lot of this and that. You are a member of this organization, member of this professional body, member of this professional body, and uh, your name is ringing bell wherever we go in the world. It is not that uh, you are hidden by any means. In fact, you do not need an introduction. And you will die. And you will die. Now, Solomon died. The wise man died. And the wise men of today die. My friend, let me tell you something. Remember Socrates? He was the great Greek philosopher. But he died. Remember Albert Einstein? He was the great German physicist, but he died. He died. 
You remember all the great rulers of this world? They are uh, numerous. You remember the great knowledgeable people of this world, the great merchants, the wealthy people, the people that are always uh, referred as the captains of industry and uh, there are men that you do not need uh, to introduce and women that you do not need to introduce and they died and they will die and the ones that are there right now will die and you that are watching and listening to this message and he died and she died irrespective of what you have acquired you will die and you know that very well the wicked die the wicked died, and the wicked died to them. The wicked will still die in the future. Ahab was a wicked person and married a wicked woman. And married a woman that came from the, the, from, from the, the, the country where they worshipped Baal. And he brought the worship of uh, 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 God, not the Almighty God, into the life of Ahab. And then his name was Jezebel. And Jezebel was an epitome of psychedelic, psych, psych, psychedelic uh, uh, whatever you can call it. Jezebel was a, a psychedelism personified. Jezebel was the painter of lips. Jezebel was uh, the mistress of eyelashes. Jezebel was uh, the mistress uh, and the uh, madame of uh, all the cosmetics of this world. And Jezebel died. Jezebel was uh, the arrogant. Like we have uh, some arrogant men, arrogant women, and they don't care anything. When they are ruling in a place, they are so arrogant, every person is a fool because they are in authority. Jezebel was like that. The prophets of God did not mean anything to them, to, him, to her. In fact, he killed them, he persecuted them. But Jezebel died with all his arrogance, with all his power. Jezebel was a power monger. Jezebel was the all in all. Jezebel was the God, as it were. And today, we have women that are like that. Now you are there, and then you are in charge of a place, and you are like a Jezebel. And there are other people that are like Jezebel, and they don't bother about anything. What they bother about is the cosmetics of the world. What they bother about is uh, the show of the world, that the show of, of, uh, of beauty, the show of all the things, the mundane things, the things that make men to commit sin in their minds and go to the hotels and meet the prostitutes. All such people shall die. And they are dying to them. They are going to die tomorrow. And if you are there, listen to me, you will die. But that's not a cause. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, listen to this bizarre thing that happened. I saw in the things that they post. Some sex worker, some prostitute died and then was put into the coffin and then her colleagues came one by one and went astride their laps and their legs across the coffin containing the remains of their colleague and began to twerk and uh, to celebrate what they knew to do and then to bid their colleague farewell with that kind of something. But the person has died. And the people that did this one, that these colleagues die, will die too in the present day. Now somebody dies, and then in some climb, you find that it is a time of merriment. Instead of time of mourning, instead of time of reflection, Instead of being a time of soberness, now is a time of merriment, it's a time of dancing. In fact, they call the undertakers. And the undertakers are doing some, some kind of funny and strange things with the coffin. And they dance and they, and they carry it up and down. And uh, you are wondering, what is this about? And some people are spreading money. In some other places, they don't do this, but they don't care. Somebody drops dead, and they go their way. 
and they don't care. Somebody drops dead, some other person drops dead, and they don't care, they go their way. But soon they die. Listen to me. During this coronavirus pandemic, how many thousands of people died in the places? And they died. And the person that is listening to me right now, small or great, student, high institution, junior institution, club, the merry-making person, the reveler, the one that is uh, all the time in the clubhouse in the night August, he, she will die. The person that does not believe anything. Some woman said, I don't believe that Bible stuff. You will die. And he died. And she died. Herod, the kid, John the Baptist, later on died. The woman that uh, left his brother who had married her and married this person. Now his, the person he was marrying was the brother of the person that married her. And she was not ashamed. And then um, John the Baptist said, this is wrong. And then uh, now said, he was angry in the mind, I'm going to show you I am in charge. The person that you're ruling is my husband. I'm going to show you. And uh, at a particular time, he took advantage of what was on ground and requested the head of John the Baptist. And that was given to her. John the Baptist died, and Herodias died too. And Herod died. And uh, you, you can see that whatsoever be the kind of person you are, you are going to die. The knowledgeable die. I've talked to you about uh, the psychedelic. I've talked to you about uh, uh, great people like Socrates, Asian. I've talked to I've, 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 Let me talk to you about Belshazzar. Belshazzar was that arrogant person that didn't bother about God. Who is this God of the Jews? Bring uh, the vessels that my grandfather took from Jerusalem and let's drink and make merriment and mock that God. All the mockers of the God of heaven, even in the present day, they will all die like Belshazzar died. And uh, they will die in the course of time, in the various categories of uh, people that are, are watching right now, they will all die. But then, this is the big question. Now comes the big question. After they die, what next? Remember that we have said that this is a message of the hour. God has seen all the, all the terrible things that are happening. How that the people even don't know that they know that life will come to an end and that sooner or later. Yet they do not bother about it. They don't think about it. They don't stop. The people that are looking for enjoyment of the flesh, the people that are manifesting, the people that are exposing their wealth, are flaunting their wealth, their houses, their cars, their mansions, and their body contours, they are there, and they don't care. But they know that time is going to come when they will say, I have no pleasure in the things that I was doing. At the age of uh, 80, 90, will you still flaunt your laps? Will you still be interested in flaunting the thing that God gave to you on your chest? At the age of 85, 90, will you still be wearing the bump short and flirting around? But that time is coming very close, how time flies. The person that is talking with you, uh, just a few years ago, I gave my life to Christ Jesus when I was 30. And then, but I wanted to do that when I was 11 years. I didn't have opportunity. I cried to die. Nobody was able to lead me on to the Lord. But at the age of 30, thereabout, somebody led me to the Lord. And now I'm going to 77, about hitting 77 this July. And now look at it, how time flies. This thing happened this other day in 1975. And now, 77, and death is coming. So, will you come run down this slope? And then, death is coming. So, it is necessary for somebody to now think. 
and said, after this death, that is a reality, which nobody is a believer on, an unbeliever on, what next? i show you what next. What next is that after that you close your eyes, your spirit leaves you. The real you leaves you. Your flesh is not the real you. Your flesh is just an outer tabernacle. That is how it is stated. An outer tabernacle. I read some scriptures to prove that. Your flesh, the body that you are carrying, no matter how elegant, no matter how beautiful, no matter whatever, the system that you are carrying, the brain you are carrying, you may be a genius. You may not be. You may be a mediocre in the matter of intelligence. You may be the most intelligent person in the world, and you are a, a developer of this and a developer of that. You are an inventor. Now listen to me. All the things about you, your brain, your organs, your kidney, your liver, and your body, your skin, your stomach, and all that, there are the outer tabernacle. There is something in you. That is the very you. And that is what is known as your spirit. Don't ask me the question, where does it dwell? What part of the body does it wear? I ask you, in what part of your town does wind dwell? What part of your village is a house of wind? Your spirit is not tangible. It's not what you can hold like this desk. It's not like a body that you can hold. It is like your shadow. The shadow is when the light is thrown and then it casts a shadow of you on the ground. Now that shadow is uh, not having any tangibleness that is cannot hold it. But the difference between the shadow and your spirit is that your spirit is an intelligible being. It's a very you, has feeling. When he moves out, he heads to somewhere. And uh, that is what uh, we find uh, stated in scriptures of truth. The Lord Jesus Christ said it, and the people that he gave his spirit uh, said so. And um, I read from what the Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, now said to the Corinthians. I'm reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and reading from verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, the solution is that it dies and then enters the grave and then rotten there. And after all, you go and dig out skeleton. We have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Listen to me. We have a building. Now, what, what building is talking about? We are talking about what has been prepared in heaven, a celestial body that is going to, that the, the spirit is going to enter, going to carry. Verse 2, for this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our house, which is from heaven. He talked about when this body is dissolved. He's talking about another house that somebody will enter. He's talking about the spirit of the person having another building, another tabernacle to enter. Verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle, this earthly tabernacle, do groan, being burdened, and not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up in life. Now, Jesus Christ, the embodiment of truth. Listen to me. There is something about Jesus Christ that you do not need to gainsay. You must not allow yourself to be deceived. Uh, you must not allow somebody to deceive you. There is something about Jesus Christ that you need to take hold of and never let go. And what is it? There is a statement that he made that no religious bringer has ever made that statement. And it's incontrovertible. And what is that statement? We read from the gospel according to St. John. And uh, we're reading from verse, verse 1 to verse 4. 
And then verse 6 and verse 7. There are the words of Jesus Christ, and like some other words in the chapter. Let not your heart be troubled. We believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the embodiment of truth. That is, if you can see truth having body moving around, that is me. The truth about God. And it is this person that you need to believe. It is him that you need to believe. And that's the reason he said, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. That's the reason he said, He that followeth me and listeneth unto me will by no means walk in darkness. And so, this is the person that told us that there is another life that comes after this one. And we hear that from a story that he told. And that story is uh, found in the gospel according to St. Luke from verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously. He had everything to his feet. He had the mansion. He had everything. There was nothing that he lacked, just like the multitudes of people today who have cornered the wealth of the nations, who have cornered the wealth by hook or crook, by good, by legitimate means, or by illegitimate means. Even if they had their wealth by legitimate means, uh, this man possibly had his wealth by legitimate means and summed and dined, and of course, uh, when there is that kind of thing, women will come around and all that. And... Uh, he was clothed in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was led at his gate, full of sores. And by this beggar, designed to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. What a pity of sight. And nobody, nobody had mercy upon him, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Listen to me, Jesus Christ is the one that was saying this. The beggar died, and the angels carried the beggar into Abraham's bosom. How can angels carry the dead person into Abraham's bosom? Abraham's bosom was referring to paradise below. Now it was not the angel that buried the beggar. The beggar may not have been buried. The beggar may have been carried and dumped somewhere. Now, when the angel carried the spirit of the beggar, conducted the spirit of the beggar into paradise below where Abraham was. Beggar died and lived. Now, and we're reading it, verse 22 again, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel to Abraham's burial. The rich man also died and was buried, not by angels, by his relatives, by those that, that uh, he found favor, that were uh, his uh, psychophants and those that were his admirers, and uh, those that inherited all his wealth, and uh, buried him, and he was gone. But in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment. Listen to me. But in hell, he lift up in, uh, Is it the body that was cast into the grave that lift up uh, the eyes? No. That shows you. There is another life to live, and he died, and she died, the big and the small, and they live. And you die, and you live. And if you die tomorrow, you will live from tomorrow on, throughout all eternity. Those that died, remember your colleagues, remember your classmates, remember the people that were shot dead, remember the people that died in the plane crash, remember the person that died by some accident, automobile accident, 
They all died and they went. Remember the people that were drowned in the pools or hotels or whatever. Remember the people that were violently massacred. They all died, but they all lived. The rich man died and lived. The poor man died and lived. In Matthew chapter 17, I read uh, this uh, incident uh, that shows you that uh, they died, they lived. And he died, and he lived. He lives. Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 1. Now, before I read uh, this account, let me read what he said just a uh, few days before this account. And that is... Uh, in verse uh, 28 of uh, Matthew chapter 16. Verily, I say unto you that be some standing here, which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. He was talking to the people and they were listening with uh, rapt attention and he made this comment. And his disciples were there when he made the comment. There are some of you standing here who will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his glory. Now, what did he mean? Chapter 17 from verse 1. And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into an high mountain apart and were transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Listen to me. And now, suddenly, there was metamorphosis, great metamorphosis, and he turned from his human nature into his glorious nature, the nature that he has right now, the nature with which he's going to come in the clouds. Now, that's what happened at the mount. And uh, verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, Elijah talking with him. And Peter answered and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, three boots, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Listen to me attentively. This is real. If you want to go to Israel to go to see the mount, then you can be conducted to the mount that we are talking about. Now, and these people ex experienced some, some wonderful things, and they saw Moses, and they saw the prophet Elijah, who had died. If there is no life after death, why did they see them? And they even recognized them. They had died. And then Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, when he was being killed in the house of apostles, he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. There are those that say, no spirit in man. When you die, you lie like a fowl. There is nothing like that. If there is something to believe, believe what should be believed. Don't believe what should not be believed. Don't believe your mind. Don't believe what the atheist said. Don't believe what the philosopher said. Don't believe what the theologian that does not know Christ says and what does not have the spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth. Believe whom you should believe. Jesus is the embodiment of truth. And those that have his spirit know that there is life after death. Now, Stephen said, into, Receive my spirit, O Lord Jesus. And even Jesus Christ himself, when he was a dying, when he was on the cross and about to give up the ghost, I said that again, about to give up the ghost, he said, Father, I commend my spirit into your hands. When he was a human being, he had a human spirit. He had his mind, and he had a human spirit. And then the Bible tells us that when he breathed his life and organs failed, now the spirit went out. And the Holy Spirit guided that spirit of his into the lower parts of the earth, into the place where Abraham was to go and tell them that it is time, time was come. It's time to get out of this place and go to paradise above. You've been in paradise beneath, and but you now go to paradise above because the deed has been done. You die, you leave. Don't you teach it? Don't do away with it. You die today, you live from today throughout all eternity. You die tomorrow, you live from tomorrow throughout all eternity. Every human being that has ever been born on earth is living right now. 
Their spirits have gone into the next, into the other side. And the Bible says, when that time comes, now when the spirit departs from the body, it will return to the giver to give account. And the Bible says that um, uh, everybody will give account of his life, how you lived your life, even in this world. Take note of that. Woman, lady, man, young, old, Take note of that. You will surely give account of how you lived your life. And he died. And she died. Some die young. Some die at two years. Some die in the womb. And you say, uh, they also included, uh, uh, they do have spirit, yes. He said concerning uh, Jeremiah, while you were in your mother's womb, I noticed you. I ordained you even from your mother's womb to be a prophet. So, once there is conception, there is life forever. You don't die. God created man in his image. God did not create animals in his image. He created man in his image and in his undying image. His undying image. God does not die. Don't begin to be a believer when it is late. Do the need for right away. If you are born in... If you are born a child of God, if you are born somebody that has begun to be a child of God, having the spirit of Christ inside you, I enjoin you to continue in this way because death will come. Meanwhile, you are 50 years, but soon you are going to be 70 if God permits. Soon you are going to, later you are going to be 80 if God permits. And don't think that it is very far away. It is not very far away. I've told you my case. It's not very far away. Time, how time flies. The next moment, you find that the person that was 50 is now 80. And uh, will die. And leave this world, but will get into the next life. Listen to me. Take advantage of uh, the message of the hour. And he died and change your lifestyle and change your, change your mind and do the needful. What is the needful? What is the bottom line? The bottom line is this. You will surely die and will surely live after that you have died in all eternity. And knowing that, what do you do? You make peace with God. But before I read uh, uh, that last record and sign out. Let me show you the record of a man that refused the thing that he had and then mocked and uh, was uh, a noted uh, infidel, a person that didn't believe in God, a person that didn't believe uh, the whatever anybody was talking about concerning God and concerning Christ. His name is uh, Voltaire. He was a French person. And then, uh, this is what is noted or written concerning him. When Voltaire felt the stroke that he realized must terminate in death, he was overpowered with remorse. He at once sent for the priest and wanted to be reconciled with the church, which he mocked, which he did not really believe, in. His infidel flatterers hastened to his chamber to prevent his recantation, but it was only to witness his ignominy and their own. He caused them to their faces. And as his distress was increased by their presence, he repeatedly and loudly exclaimed, Be gone! It is you that have brought me to my present condition. Leave me, I said, be gone. What a wretched glory is each which you have produced to me. Hoping to allay his anguish by a written recantation, he had it prepared, signed it, and saw it witnessed. But it was all unavailing. For two months, he was tortured with such an agony as led him at times to gnash his teeth in impotent rage against God and man. At other times, in plaintive accents, he would plead, O Christ, O Lord Jesus. Then turning his face, he would cry out, I must die, abandoned of God and of men. As his end drew near, 
His condition became so frightful that his infidel associates were afraid to approach his bedside. Still, they gathered the door that others may not know how awfully an infidel was compelled to die. Even his nurse repeatedly said, for all the wealth of Europe, she would never see another infidel die. If you give me all the wealth of Europe for me to stand and see the death of an infidel, I will refuse all the wealth of Europe. It was a scene of horror that lies beyond all exaggeration. Such is the well-attested end of the one who had a natural sovereignty of intellect. Natural intellect, there are those that have it, and they even make, um, they, they make mockery of God that gave them the intellect. They made them to be superior. They made them to have a, a higher IQ than the other people. He had the intellect. He had excellent education. He had wealth and much earthly honor. We may all well exclaim with uh, Balaam, who said, let me die the death of the righteous and let my life end be his. And that is the bottom line, part of the bottom line. I want you to begin to say, let me die the death of the righteous. And how do you die the death of the righteous? How will you die the death of the righteous? There is something to do. There is a beginning to an end. There is a beginning of a journey, and I want to show you the beginning. In Romans chapter 5, and I sign up with these two portions of scriptures. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. You want to make peace with God. And you make peace with God, I show you how. So that you don't become like Voltaire. So that you don't become like Jezebel. So that you don't become like the one that killed John the Baptist. So that you don't become like all those people of old who have died. And then are living again. But they are being mocked in hellfire. The demons in hellfire are making their torment to be more grievous. And they are saying, sing God's your unbelieving songs. Acts chapter 20, how you make peace with God. From verse, uh, verse 17, and from my letters he sent, that is Apostle Paul to Ephesus and called the elders of the church, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I had borne with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and now I, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way out. That's the way to prepare to die and be with the Lord and die the death of the righteous. That's the way. No other way. Go to this way. Make peace with God. For dying, you will die. I will die. Everybody will die. But after that we have died, we live for all eternity. I pray that this message of the hour will have done the good it is intended to do. It will have awakened, awakened one soul, or 10 souls, or 20 souls, or 1,000 souls, or 20,000 souls. It will have awakened them to the realities that are coming and to the necessities of their lives. I pray that you be not left out among the people that we say, I got that message, I had it, and then it did great wonders in my life. God bless you for listening. Join us again next Sunday for the next shot of the message of the hour from the pulpit of many colors. Jesus, hey.